Okay, so this tutorial is going to be about the settings you can find within MAST and how far it can be customized. So at the top, the third tab is Settings. It's actually broken down into three sub-tabs, Replacement, the GUI, and Hotkeys. So first of all, for Placement Destination, I'm going to just point this out. Whenever you're actually building, placing models, the actual models go into a, they become a child of a of a parent game object that you specify. This one by default is called Mast Holder. That could be changed right here. You can actually, let me just create a new empty, drag this over here, <laughs> and it actually would place anything new under that one at that point. That simple. Change the wrong tab there. Snap to, grid, snap to grid is pretty straightforward. Now I have free placement of everything. All right, so you can specify the offset settings of anything that you place. This is, so I'm sure you've noticed by now that anything you place on a grid is placed specifically on that grid location. You can change the size of the grid, which I'll get into in just a moment. But you can also specify if it needs to actually be half a point above it. You can change it here. Now, you can actually specify, specify these on the prefabs themselves. If they do have the masked component script attached, it'll still use that over this unless you override prefab settings. I did this separately for offset settings, rotation settings, and also randomizer settings. There's an override prefab settings on each one of those, since so you can specify each one of those um, based on each particular prefab. So the rotation settings are very straightforward. Right now, you'll see it's set to 0, 90, and 0. So everything rotates on the, on the y-axis 90 degrees at a time. So if I were to press, if I were to select that, let me create a new one. So actually, so on this prefab itself, I actually have it rotating at 15 degree angles. So if I were to go over to settings and override this, go back to build, now you'll see it's actually only going to place it on 90 degree angles because I overrode it and I had it set for 90 degrees. <coughs> so the randomizer itself is pretty straightforward. The rotation factor is to, uh, is the step actually. It's going to change in the future. I'm going to be adding two different types of rotations in there. One is how far it can rotate. Um, it'll have like a minimum value and a maximum value on each axis. And then there's going to be the rotation step. Right now this is just rotation step. So what that means is this by putting a zero here and here, that means it cannot rotate at all on X and Z, but with Y it can rotate, it can be zero, one, two, all the way up to 360. If I were to set that to 90, it would only be able to rotate randomly at 90 degree angles. So the randomizer scale is pretty uh, straightforward here. Now, first of all, uh, you, you have a mi minimum and maximum for each axis, but also you can lock it. So if there's no lock, that means the X, the Z, and the Y can all be different random um, scaling. So a tree may look kind of funny if the X is different from the Z. So I set it so you can lock the X and the Z together. So it could be fat, could be tall, could be skinny, um, but the X and the Z would always match. You can also scale everything equally for certain things like boulders or whatever else that you don't want to be too far stretched out of shape. And you have a kind of a, the ability to offset the position randomly as well here. Okay, so the GUI. So to start us off here, by default, the toolbar is on the left side. I like it because, like I said, this is the way I like to dock it. But let's say you wanted to dock it on the other side. What you would do is you would change that to the right. And you could dock it, for example, over here. So this way, oops, there we go. I'll do it that way. The buttons are on the other side. You can also change the scale of the icon. So I, I set it for 50% all the way up to 100%, 0.5 all the way up to 1. 
and as you can see much smaller icons to match the rest of unity if you pref if you prefer that but i also set it so it's always based off of the height of the window so therefore um, it'll never actually be taller than your actual window all right so the background of the actual thumbnails themselves can be found here so this is a light background and then a gray background and then of course I still prefer the dark background but certain things seem to show up better with different colors those are more so requests from certain people who use it all right so the thumbnail pitch is the Y axis around which you take your actual thumbnail screenshot so when you generate them and then the yaw is the up and down so if you were to set it to 90 it would actually take a straight down picture if you set it for zero it's a straight off picture like you're looking straight at it standing on the same ground level as the actual model so in this one it's only a 30 so it's actually pretty low but still you could actually see the top of the model that's the way i prefer to have it personally okay so the grid dimensions are really straightforward so let's say your models are actually based off of a grid that is half the size of this or you want to you want to be able to easily do that if I set it for 0.5, you'll notice now it would actually place it um, at half a step. Now the oh yeah, that was a bad example for that. So here we go. So the crates, as you can see, I have to go every two steps to actually match it. And that could be changed separately for the X and Z as well as the Y unit size. And also the count, which is simply the size of the grid, really straightforward. If I do it for 10, it's a very small grid. In fact, there's a center over there. But I'm going to change it back to 100, which is the default. You could also change the color of the grid. It'll simply tint that white line. It'll have a little bit of effect on the, on the actual semi-transparent part between the lines. Uh, but just to change the, the look of the grid a little bit. All right. Lastly is going to be the hotkeys. So the hotkeys are exactly what you see here. The only modifier I'm allowing, which is if you're holding down the key and pressing the other key, is shift. So G by itself toggles the grid on and off. Shift W moves the grid up. Shift S moves the grid down. Escape deselects whatever you have. And then you have hotkeys for each tool. I honestly never used those, but those were requests. Now, this is a very useful one, is to generate random seed. So whenever you're placing an item, um, in this case, by default, you just press X, and it'll actually generate a new random seed. I know I talked about that in the other, in the other tutorial video. Rotate space, flip F, paint M for material. Restore material are pretty straightforward. Now, at the bottom of each of these is a load placement settings from the selected file and project. Now, I don't know if I'm going to keep this going. I'm probably going to end up moving everything to document properties. The main reason I had this is in case you had specific setup and you didn't want to lose it, you could actually um, go into the... Let me find it here. Here it is. So in the mass folder under etc., there was act actually, excuse me, under scripts and scriptable objects. Actually, oh, under settings, here we go. My apologies, I haven't actually looked at these in a while. So under settings, you have GUI settings, hockey settings, and placement settings. You could actually take those, put them anywhere else in your project you wanted to. You could duplicate them, move them elsewhere, and all they are is a simple scriptable object that holds the details of whatever you chose in that settings tab. You can see all the hockey stuff, all the GUI settings stuff. <laughs> That way, if you ever download a new version of MAST or you're wanting to use MAST in another project with the same settings, you would have to only simply transfer that file. And then you would go into MAST and you'd be able to, to simply select the one you wanted to load, for example, placement. And you would hit load and it would load all those settings. And it's the same thing at the bottom of each of the different tabs. Again, in the future, I'm probably going to make it a document property so it'll be linked, it'll be locked to the document, I mean, to the actual project you're on. But I'm planning on coming up with a way to export your settings and import them into uh, another project. All right, so that kind of breaks down all the settings, everything under tools. There's going to be multiple tutorials on those since there are quite a few different ones and they're fairly involved tools. 
Um, but I will see y'all in another video. Thank you.